Okay, I want to just give a, a short, uh, I guess you can call it an exhortation, and then we're going to move into prayer, and we're going to move into uh, our prayer circles that we usually do. We haven't done it in a while, but I'll give some direction on that here in a few minutes. But can you open up your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 4? <clears throat> Randy, it's so true that sometimes we sing what we would never pray. We were singing the song, I give myself away. And I asked myself the question, when's the last time I prayed that? Lord, I give myself away for you to do whatever you want to do through my life. Started beginning to feel convicted. A lot of my prayer life is about me. I, I need this. I want that. God, move here, move there, do this, do that. And what if we spent just as much time praying, Lord, I give myself away. And that's one of the things we've been talking about, <clears throat> rightly, rightly honoring the Holy Spirit in our midst, is that he would be able to do whatever he wants to do through us. If you could put a title on this little brief exhortation, it's called Fanning into Flame. So in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, Paul tells Timothy this, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation and to teaching. Verse 14, do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. I want you to take note of verse 15 where it says, practice these things. Immerse yourself in them. He's talking about the reading of Scripture to exhorting, to teaching, to good doctrine, things like that. But he's also saying, give yourself to the gift or gifts that God has given to you. Do not neglect them. In other words, a couple other translations for verse 15, it says, be constantly engrossed in them. Give yourself entirely to them. Be committed to them. Be absorbed in them. Be completely occupied in your ministry. You have a ministry from the Lord Jesus, and he's given you grace and the gifts to operate and function in your ministry. And Paul's telling Timothy, do not neglect these things. Now, I want you to turn over to 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy chapter 1. So part of the historical context in Timothy's life is Timothy personally, he was a timid person, fearful, right? Paul had to encourage him a couple of times to not be afraid, to don't be fearful, don't be timid. Um, he also had some physical ailments, had some sickness, and also he was young. If you look at the context in which he lived in, Nero was the emperor. We all know him as a, a wicked man, killing Christians, persecuting Christians. Also, Paul told Timothy a lot to deal with the false teachers. And so you have this young man who's naturally fearful. Nero is emperor, killing Christians, persecution, false teaching. There's a lot on his plate. And look at 2 Timothy verse 6. Paul is reminding him of his faith, and he tells him to do this. For this reason, I remind you, Timothy, to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. The solution to Tim, for Timothy in his day and time was not just to get quiet and to hope things get better. 
but it was to fan into flame. I want to read a couple other translations that word it differently. Stir up. Keep constantly blazing. Keep ablaze. Keep stirring up the gift of God that is in you. One commentary says this. In telling Timothy to keep ablaze the gift of God, Paul was encouraging him to persevere. Timothy did not need new revelations or new gifts. He needed the courage and self-discipline to hang on to the truth and to use the gifts he had already received. If Timothy would step out boldly in faith, the Holy Spirit would go with him and give him power. When you use the gifts God has given you, you will find that God will give you the power you need to accomplish whatever task he gives you. And there's a man named Brennan Manning. He was telling a story one time. He was talking to a spiritual leader in his life. And his spiritual leader said this to him. He said, Brennan, you don't need any more insights into the faith. You have, you've got enough insights to last you 300 years. He says, the most urgent need in your life is to trust what you have received. Now, nowhere am I saying, or was that spiritual leader saying, you don't need your Bible, you don't need to seek God, you don't need to pray, you don't need to grow in the Word, you don't need to strengthen your foundation. He wasn't saying that. What he was saying is that you can have Bible knowledge, yet still not believe what God has freely given to you. He's freely given you the Holy Spirit. He's freely endowed you with Gifts, spiritual gifts, graces to do this and to do that. And only that, he's promised that he will work through you. In other words, there's no pressure on you and I to make something happen. All we simply have to say is, Lord, I give myself away for you to use me. That's all. So how do we fan into flame the gifts of God? How do we stir them? Well, there's a couple things we can do, but one of the most important ways for the giftings to be stirred in our lives is through prayer. If we would spend a little bit more time praying, Lord, use me. God, I appreciate my brother over there. His ministry is going well. You're using him. I pray you would use him even more. Praise God for him. But Lord, I'm getting distracted on everyone else's gifts and everyone else's calling, and yet you've given me a ministry, and you've given me gifts to help fulfill that ministry. I'm praying right now, Lord, you would use me. You would stir my heart. You would breathe upon my heart in a powerful way to where the Holy Spirit moves through me, and I'm obedient, that I yield to him, that I trust him, that I take the risk. So that's what we're going to pray for here in a few minutes. So prayer circles, what do those look like? What are we doing? So what's going to happen is we're going to have our deacons and some other leaders. They're going to raise their hand. They're going to be dispersed throughout the room. And I'm going to ask you to stand and go join a group. We want to have anywhere from like 10 to uh, 15 people per group. And... As we're praying for the Lord to fan into flame the gifts of God within us, um, just want to encourage us to pray two minute, a minute, two minute prayers. Uh, Don't take over the prayer circle, please. Uh, Let others pray as well. Um, But here's the thing I want you to remember as we're praying, I want us to be honest in our prayers. It's not about getting loud or or whispering. It's about being honest. The Lord answers and he responds to honest prayers. And so for some of you, you may say, Lord, I don't even know what the gifts I have. I don't even know them. Pray that. Some of you may say, Lord, I've been disobedient. I haven't been stepping out in faith. I've just been idle. I've been late. Pray honest prayers so that the Lord would breathe his breath of life on you. Okay, so if our leaders could go ahead and stand and just be dispersed throughout the room, that'd be great.
If, Jim and Lisa, can you guys lead a group as well? Jason and Jess, can you guys lead a group as well? Devere? Dan and Sarah, can you guys lead a group as well? Okay, you guys see them? Leaders, can you hold your hands up because they're about to stand? They won't be able to see you, but okay, the rest of you, can you stand? Go find, find a group. And before you start praying, I'll, I'll pray first. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Okay. I'll pray first, and then if the prayer leader wants to jump out and pray as well. Father, we come before you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the cross of Jesus. And Lord, we're asking corporately that you would fan into flame the gift of God on the inside of us. We're praying for a, an explosion of the gifts on this corporate body. Father, we pray that you would break the spirit of fear so that grace may be released through us. Holy Spirit, we pray for a mighty stirring. Would you stir the waters? Would you cause faith to arise? We want to be obedient and faithful. So would you help us to pray? Help us to pray according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Father, we come before you corporately, and we thank you that you are fanning into flame the giftings, the callings, the assignments, the purposes of God within us. And Father, I pray that you would break the spirit of fear off of our lives in Jesus' name. And that boldness and power and strength and might would, would, would reside within us. The same power that resurrected Jesus would be our portion. So Lord, we just position ourselves before you. And I ask that you would blow your breath of life over us and the fire within our heart. Lord, I pray for those who have been abused by spiritual gifts, who have seen them misused. I pray for healing. I pray that you would restore them from any trauma or pain that this causes just to even talk about this or pray about this. And that you would begin to teach them how to rightly use spiritual gifts. God, we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you for your mercy, your kindness towards us, Lord. I pray that you would wash over your people. Pray for the strength of your word to be in our spirit. God, I pray for all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, I pray for the activation of those things. Awaken. Awaken in Jesus' name. That as your word commands us, in 1 Peter 4, you say, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. You say in Romans 12, having 
gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. Lord, I pray that we would not neglect the gifts that you have given us. There would be no more hiding, but a bold witness. Father, we thank you. We love you. Would you continue to build your church through our lives? In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Amen.